Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of uh, Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And uh, we're going to talk about NXT Gold Rush Night 1. A lot of stuff has went down. We're going to get right into it. A lot of titles. Uh, championship Gold was on the line in this matchup. So, uh, and, uh so uh, we'll get we'll get to that a little situation, a little sound. Sorry about that. Um, Seth Rollins and Braun Breaker both will arrive at the PC Arena to get ready for their title match. Seth Rollins, as you know, has been uh, taped his ribs all taped up after Finn Balor's attack last night from Monday Night Raw. But it's kicked off with the North American title. Wesley defends against Tyler Bate with uh, Mustafa Ali as the special guest referee for this for this contest. Heck of a matchup, but Mustafa Ali starting you know. Um, goofing around as a referee on purpose, but I think he wants both men to really, really fought their hearts out. Uh, uh, fight their hearts out, excuse me. Fight their hearts out, oh God, I am not doing well today. Uh, writing ATMs and fart their hearts out. Fight their hearts out in this matchup. And... And then uh, Mustafa Ali started, you know, started um, stop playing around, started doing things the right way as a referee. But uh, Wesley did retain the title over Tyler Bate, but it seems like Lee and Bate are not buying what Ali is selling. I don't know what's up with that. So, 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 uh, uh, so, so there's that. Uh, Gigi Dolan had a promo about, you know, Art that takes her away from her regular mundane life, and uh, she says it, you know, it helps her. It helps her as well. And consider wrestling and art too. So I think uh, you know I'm starting to respect Gigi Dolan a little bit more as she we dive deep into her into her heart into her personality a little bit more to what know what she was all about. I love Gigi Dolan. She's very beautiful, curvaceous, one of my favorite ladies in NXT, and so. But the woman opposing Ms. Dolan next week, Mackenzie Mitchell, was interviewing that woman, Kiana James, who uh, basically disrespected Gigi Dolan, thinks she's better than Gigi Dolan. Then they had a Chase You Pep rally for Thea Hale, and come to find out, and she graduated high school, she's only 19 years old, and Charlie Dempsey interrupted. And it, I mean, Charlie Dempsey and Drew Gulak interrupted. She's only she graduated high school. What do we got ourselves into? And Duke Hudson calling Statler and Waldorf. That was funny. But then you know Duke Hudson giving her um, giving Hale pipes, Fia Hale props, and then um um and um so Thea Hale had her speech. She was ready to go. Tiffany Stratton comes out, runs her mouth a little bit, saying they give a zero percent chance, and then you're not gonna tap me out. And then, uh, and then the Hale attacks uh, Stratton and, and walks into Kamora Lock on Tiffany Stratton, made her to tap out, and then she takes Stratton's title, was holding it up. Will that be the scene next week? We will find out for sure. Skiz was very upset about um, about the losses, and Joe Gacy says, "Hey." You guys been winning. You guys been working hard. It's me. I gotta deal with deal with me. I know exactly what to do. And you know, oh Joe Gacy's admitting he was wrong. Sk oh, James uh, Jagger Reed was upset, and then Ava Rain kind of like put everything in perspective, saying four roots one tree. We're not gonna get this now down. And then the die I went about their business, and you know Joe and Joe Gacy kind of like pretty pretty thankful that Ava Rain kept things together. Meanwhile, Diamond Mine was watching the whole thing from a, from a tablet and said, "Hey, you know, you know what's up with Diamond Mine? I don't, I don't know." And they started cracking jokes on each other, and 
They're having a little bit of fun. <clears throat> so, so they pop. Even though um, they lost the match with the schism, <clears throat> they know why. Meanwhile, NXT Anonymous has uh, Lyra Valkyria confronting JC Jane, and because JC Jane kind of disrespected Lyra Valkyria, so so there's that. Meanwhile, the Triple Threat Number One Contenders match: Josh Briggs, Brooks Jensen, and Brooks Jensen teaming up against Hank Walker, T Tank Ledger, and Idris Nofi and Malik Blade. The winner in this match faces Gallus next week, and the upstarts of Idris Nofi and Malik Blade ended up winning the match, and they will be facing Gallus next week. Speaking of Gallus, they were talking about the match after afterwards. Los Latarios interrupted because. You're lucky you were not in this match because we would have beaten one and we would have beaten you for those titles. Mm. And Gallus' night is not over yet. Meanwhile, um, Eddie Thorpe was, uh, you know, doing a little record scratching there, hearing what's going on. Hey, take off the headphones. I got your idea for you. Damon Kemp comes up to him. I'm challenging you to a matchup. How about Raw Underground? And then Eddie Thorpe was kind of, kind of intrigued. He goes, Raw well, Underground, huh? Yeah, he goes, yeah. No ropes, just grappling, and and then Aethorp goes. You know what? Challenge accepted. I'll be there. So, so that so there's your match. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we saw Roxanne Perez walk by, make a beeline, and you hear a lot of crashing going on. Aethorp's like, "What the heck is going on?" You see the um, Blair Davenport getting knocked down. Blair Davenport getting knocked down, and Roxanne Perez was getting held back by officials. And Roxanne Perez is like, that's what you get, Blair. That's what you get. No, uh, and so Blair's like, Blair Devonport's like, ah, Roxanne. Okay, Roxanne Perez, game on. So, so you got that going for. It. So he's got, got that going. Uh then uh, Seth Rollins was, you know, trying to get ready for his matchup, and then Nathan Frazier approaches him. And remember, Nathan Frazier was trained under Seth Rollins. And Seth Rollins goes, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, and, uh, you know, he goes, listen, I'm a, I am proud. You, you got the thing of the cup there. And he says, yeah, it's pretty heavy. Hey, congratulations to you, too. And then Seth Rollins got serious and said, hey, listen, I'm proud of the man you become you are. I'm proud of you. So it was, that was a really cool moment to Seth Rollins say to Nathan Frazier. So it was really, really, he said, always give back, he says, always give back. So, anyways, then, then he goes, cheers, have a good one. Go back to look at the matchup, and then Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams talked to him, and they said, from champ to champ, and they had a great, uh, they exchanged pleasantries. It was really cool to see that, and they said, hey, you know, uh, you know, Seth Rollins giving some sound advice and all that, so that's pretty good. So that's pretty good to, um, to see that. So, you're talking about you know, Nathan Frazier and then Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Seth Rollins, man, I'll tell you one thing. I, I, I'm i starting to respect Seth Rollins, freaking Rollins a little bit more. Burn it down, man. And one-on-one -on -one matchup, Dana Brooke versus Cora Jade. And during the matchup, Dana Brooke went to go for um, her trademark handspring elbow, but she landed, on one, she landed awkwardly on her right leg. And it kind of gave way, and so it got to the point where you know she called. They called out for the stretchers, and then Cora Jade doesn't think, I think she's faking it and all that. And then all of a sudden, well, despite the fact that on one leg she did fight Cora Jade, she got back up to the fight. But then, um, and as Cora Jade hit him, hit uh, Dana Brooke with a half crab. Dana Brooke had no choice but to tap out. Um, but but to tap out, so uh, uh, I wanna now this next situation, this next uh, segment. Um, I have to admit, this was a situation where um, I'm gonna try to find the original video. Um, Von Wagner sat down with Mr. Stone, his manager, and. And just, uh, and, and they finally got to the picture of him as a baby in the hospital bed with the, with the stitches around his skull. 
So here we go. Wait, wait, wait. But mine was fused into place uh, early. Uh, I had trigonocephaly. Trigonocephaly. That's what. Uh, I'm, yeah, you heard that. Um, he had trigonocephaly, which is uh, it, it affects the, somehow the skull. The skull is supposed to grow when you're a child, but it didn't do that for um, von Wagner. So the only way it could get fixed was through surgery, and he got you know he got really he got really in touch with that picture, and he was just like 15 months old in that picture. I mean, he's over a year a year old in that picture, and his father was you know wrestling to pay the bills. His father, as you know, um, Wayne Bloom, who was known as Bo um, uh, Bo Beverly. Um, one half of the Beverly Brothers back in 1991-92 when they debuted in the WWE. And just hearing that whole story makes me want to respect uh, Vaughn Wagner even more. And with, you know, Mr. Stone wanted to get to know more. He said, hey, that's all for today. It seems like, Mr. you know, that opened up a little bit more. And Mr. Stone, I'll tell you one thing right now. And Mr. Stone being a parent of twin sons, he probably understands what we probably can't couldn't imagine what you know you know von wagner was going through so and for for him for von wagner to tell that story and it was real and it was so heartwarming and, and it's just you know it just you know really, but also really sad too because you know what he went to as a child so i couldn't imagine but it, it's heartwarming to see him open up to Mr. Stone, and, and that, you know, Von Wagner's earned my respect, let's root for him, let's pull, pull for him, hope he becomes a champion in the WWE, we want to see that, so, that's what, that's, that was a beautiful moment right there, but Von Wagner, meanwhile, um, another cool moment happened, actually, Mr. Scripps was talking to Eddie Thorpe, uh, Eddie Thorpe was studying the Ron Underground matches, and I got, got I they go and get training, and then, and then, uh, was, hey, I heard you going to, if anybody knows Damon Kemp, it's me. And I also mean, Gable Stevenson, Gable Stevenson showed up, and he goes, "You know what? I'll train you." We're on the ground. You're serious? Yep. Let's get it on. So, Eddie Thorpe and Gable Stevenson training. This is going to be interesting. We had to see, and everybody was talking about what's going to happen to Gable Gable Stevenson. We have not seen him over and since he got drafted to the Raw and all this a couple of years ago. So now, I think. We're going to be ready to see more of Gable Steepson. Uh, face to face, Carmelo Hayes and Baron Corbin. And Baron Corbin's bragging about what he's done in, since he came out to the main roster and all that. He goes, at 26 years old. And then Carmelo Hayes counted, at 26 years old, I won the NXT Breakout Tournament, cashing in for a title shot, and I won. At 26 year, year, years old, you were uh, cut by the Arizona Cardinals. I went, e -e -e. So, and then. Baron Corbin, after he said his piece, he walked away. So, the title match will be next week. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Dragon Lee was talking to the lovely uh, ladies, Ulysses Leon. She's one of my favorite. And the, and the very cute and petite Valentina for Royce. And as they were talking, Nathan Fraser joins in and said, Hey, you know, hey, you know, it's great. And he said, But then, that, when the ladies went out there to get ready for their matchup, Against the metaphors, the metaphor team of Jakara Jackson and Lash Legend, um, Nathan Frazier looks at Dragon Lee and says, "Hey, I got advice from Seth, saying I should give back." He says, "You want one, one of the reasons why I became the NXT Heritage Cup champion? I think it's fitting that you get the shot." And Dragon Lee says, "Let's do it. All right, so." And they were joking about where Dragon Lee's going to put his pick. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun to see that. So it will be um, next week. It will be the Heritage Cup title on the line. Nathan Frazier's first defense is against Dragon Lee. It will be a heck of a matchup. Uh, meanwhile, uh, as Gallus is about to get ready to take off on the PEC, and then Joe Coffey is on the phone. He's talking about rats. And all of a sudden, Jane Stacks Lorenzo hits Joe Coffey in the back with the door. He says, we're going to go for a ride, grabs Joe Coffey, puts him in the trunk. A little tax and kidnapping. Uh, it looks like Lorenzo's about had enough of Gallus. So, um, Ulysses Leon and Valentina Royce took on the team of Jakara Jackson, Lash Legend. And Booker T was like, oh, hi, Biscotti. And then, and then Vic Joseph said, hey, uh, 
Somebody, uh, somebody here is not going to be very happy. Well, you better watch your words. We have an authority figure in the back. And I didn't know what Vic Joseph meant by that. I figured Shawn Michaels must be sitting in the crowd. Nope. It was Queen Charmel, the Hall of Famer, sitting in the crowd. I'm like, aha. You see, Vic Joseph's no dummy. He knows what's up. Booker T, behave yourself. <laughs> Anyways, the team of last legend, Jakar Jackson, did pick up the victory over uh, for Royce and Leon. And then that set up the World Heavyweight Championship matchup. And the fans were singing Seth Rollins' song coming out. And it was really goosebumps to see that. And then um, these two fought. And then in the end, uh, Braun Breaker, in, in the end, though, against Braun Breaker, Breaker held his own. But a lot of people, some people are saying he's 100% ready for the main roster. Uh, and then Seth Rollins ends up retaining his title. Then, after the matchup, Finn Balor once again continued where he picked up where he left off last night on Monday Night Raw, attacking Rollins after the matchup. And then uh, it got to the point where, since, you know, security tried to stop in Balor, that wasn't working. But then finally, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams ended up coming to the aid of Seth Rollins, which I gotta respect Hayes and Williams for doing exactly that. So, so. So there it is. So there it is, episode 655 of Eric Lemus Shenanigans of 1977. Oh, by the way, the Red Sox won again. Six in a row for them. Really excited. So until the next episode comes rolling around, um, tomorrow play some Joker's Wild. And also, uh, even though the, tomorrow is the first day of summer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, stage shenanigan address my final thoughts of spring of 2023. So until then, until the next episode comes rolling around once again, Mr. Announcer. Take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.